Three, two, one. Welcome to Tonal Distancing. We're here today. Uh, I'm Kana Max. We have Prabhu, Bloom, Ragunathan, and then we finally have our. What did I, did I butcher it? No, no. I just I it's no. It's just every time it's a different one. I like it. It's the, okay. it's Prabhu Ragunathan, aka Bloom. We're Prabhu, focusing I was... too much on your name, too much. <laughs> Bloom over there. In the yeah. <laughs> and who we really want to talk about is Kyle House. Um, he's joined us here today. He has some music coming out. I know him because uh, we kind of met up in Michigan when I was like uh, playing around in Detroit. We played, I think, one gig. We were on the same bill together. Um, and then I think he went to Pennsylvania a little bit. Now he's back in Michigan. But I'll let him tell his story, tell uh, us about himself, his music, and, and what's coming up for him. So take it away, Kai. Awesome. Yeah, thank you very much, Canem. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here. The podcast is really awesome. And Prabhu as well, thank you very much for, for having me. Um, and I think we actually played a few gigs. I think we did one at the Blind Pig as well. Um, you're right. You're right. But yeah, we that PJ's one was cool, and I still see your I still see Canem stickers, Canem X stickers all over Detroit. So it's pretty cool stuff. But Thank yeah, you. like like Canem said, my name's Kai Althaus. I'm a singer songwriter based out of Detroit. But the main project that I'm working on uh, right now is with a band called Toad, and that's spelled T O E D, kind of a you know, funny play on words. Um, we're a funk rock jam band. And I kind of, I met these guys when I first moved to Detroit, I was doing a ton of open mics. Um, just like getting out there. It had been a long time since I had performed live and I met a bunch of people. These guys were funky, um, kind of the exact style of like funk rock that I wanted to play. I introduced myself and, uh, you know, the rest is history. So the three main pieces of it are myself, Kai Altaus on vocals and guitar. Sergio Montanez on, he's pretty much our Swiss army knife, any gig, he could play any instrument, um, really freakish talent. Um, he's based a lot on the recordings of this EP. And then um, we have Brandon Kaczyk as well, who is tenor saxophone. And then we have a studio record drummer um, named Scott Schummer. And we kind of just fill the pieces with other uh, artists. But yeah, so what we're here to talk, what I'm here to talk about primarily today is our EP that's coming out. Uh, it's titled The Hot Tub, Hot Tub Toad Machine. Um, and just kind of a little funny, fun Where did that name come words. from? Is that like Hot Tub Time Machine? Hot yeah, tub so it's... Toad it's machine. Just, I was just yes. thinking that, yeah. It is a, it's a parody on that. And we were, we were kind of messing around making a demo of some of these songs that we had that we thought were really good. And one night we were just at our buddy's house, like hanging out in a hot tub. And we were like, what if, we, what if we called it like toad tub or tub toad or something? <laughs> uh, and somebody was like hot, hot tub toad machine. And, uh, what, what, about, to, what about toad on the beach? <laughs> toad on the beach would be funny too. I mean, the name the is, is that what I am right now? Am I the toad on the beach? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the name the name of the band is like funny it's great i mean a lot of the times people will be like oh like the frog right um and i'll be like no and then they're like oh like your car's getting towed i'm like no no one more one more and they never end up on toed which is uh but it's you know it's funny and i think that's kind of the energy of the band i like to describe us as like if ween met prince um just kind of like bizarre but you know takes takes the music seriously uh, as well, and yeah. you know, just goes for a funky, uh, funky vibe. Nice, nice. And um, so you're you have the EP coming out July 29th, right? Yes, yes. And then, but you also do like open mics around. You you said you play open mics by any chance? You know Mike Ward? Uh, Psycho songs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yes, I, I saw him <laughs> at uh, an open mic on Tuesday. I mean, I I know of him more so. Because okay, uh, okay. I see him around. Uh, yeah. We've met before and introduced ourselves. But um, no, he's great. Yeah, I saw him on yeah. Tuesday. He just released a, a project himself, I believe. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he, I, I always think about him because uh, he, he, I think he, I don't know if he still hosts an open mic. Is Ash Coffee still around? Uh, maybe. Okay. Um, but, I know he hosted one there. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, sure. But yeah, then the then to build on what you were saying, I do host uh, an acoustic and like kind of energy uh singer songwriter open mic at a place called detroit sip over uh, northwest detroit by university of detroit mercy um it's pretty brand new but it's saturdays from noon to three uh so that's that's like a that's like a new time for open mics i feel like i don't see much on the weekend but uh it's going well 
And anyone in the Detroit area who's trying to get some experience, trying to meet some musicians should definitely come out and uh, have a good time. Detroit Sip is a great spot. Uh, wonderful coffee, great food, great pastries, you know, the whole deal. Go to Detroit Sip, get fat, play some music Saturday, <laughs> yeah. noon to three with, with Kyle House. No, that's cool. I've always wanted to host an open mic, but I, I felt like I, I didn't want, it feels like a big thing to take on regularly. Maybe we could talk about that later. But before yeah. we dig any more, we all want to drink. Uh, so feel free to join me in a toast. It doesn't have to be alcoholic, but I choose for it to be for myself. Anyways, a toast to the lords and ladies of music. Please guide us as we go on our musical journey and be kind to us as we drink. Uh, Kai, who would you like to toast today? Let me get this first. Yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm. Um, yes, yeah, so I was thinking about this, and I think I would like to toast Billy Strings. Okay. Um, Billy Strings is also a native Michigander, born in Lansing, Michigan. Folk rock, jam band, blue, uh, bluegrass type of stuff. But he is really just like, you know, at the top of the top of virtuosos in terms of guitar. He's he's so good. All sorts of cool pedals. I got to see him at uh, um, summer camp last year. And outside of me, you know, like gushing over him being a guitar hero uh this past week my uncle actually passed away which is kind of sad oh i'm sorry uh, but that. yeah I'm well I, I appreciate that but i had a lot of great memories with him and i got to see bob dylan with him in detroit uh, probably like six years ago and so i was watching bob dylan videos on youtube and i came across billy strings playing don't think twice it's all right and if you haven't seen that video i would recommend checking it out because it is it's flawless it's tasteful he's you know made it his own as well and it's it's just really really good so yeah I like to toast billy strings oh well, how about billy strings and your uncle how about that yeah, yeah and my uncle as well and <laughs> probably who would you like to toast uh, i i want to toast uh cory taylor from slipknot because okay. uh, i've been on a real big slipknot kick as of late i mean i was debating whether or not i want to do uh Jim Root, or you know, Jim Root and Corey Taylor, because and from a guitar perspective, been playing a lot of that kind of music, and uh, mm. Jim Root, uh, I always, uh, I've always thought of like with Slipknot, like the, the other guitarist, Mick Thompson, but I would never really think of Jim Root when I play, and and just like watching videos of him and how uh, it's funny how all his like signature guitars are very like classic rock guitars, but then like their ultimate like drop a metal machines like he has a telecaster he has a jazz master he has a uh and i just think it's cool to see that and like just kind of uh eccentricity and he's also just a really cool guy from what i've seen of interviews and cory taylor because i want to i've been singing singing along to the songs in the car and i'm just like how does he do this this dude's voice is like so massive and so mm -hmm. audible and so clear but yet um, sometimes with a lot of metal stuff, it can get the whole screaming thing can get kind of just like muddy yeah. and, and just not, I don't know. I think that's a really big art to be able to be that cohesive clear. and clear and cohesive. Yeah. Yeah. So shout out to right. those, those two crazy good musicians. The world already knows that, but I'm just reiterating exactly. to the world that they're That's dope. okay. I mean, <laughs> hey, it, it, this is about inspiration. You know, exactly. I, I, won't, I won't take anything away from you. You know who I'm going to toast today? I'm going to toast Stevie Wonder because at my last yeah. gig, we ended it. I mean, I, it's kind of something I, I've closed with a couple times. But we ended it with Superstition by Stevie Wonder. Had uh, Nina Grace doing vocals, Pie Show on sax. We had a couple guests. Uh, another, sorry, one other guest, uh, Brendan Jones from Slow Finn played with us. And, and that the drummer and bassist for my band are Daniel Sanders and uh, Joe Wasserman. And we just kind of ended it, and it was just like a fun, funky kind of jam that I think we seem to enjoy, and I hope everyone else enjoyed when we were there. So that's who I'm toasting to, is Stevie Wonder, for, for creating more memories for me. So oh, yeah. to that, yeah, great stuff. we drink. <laughs> I thought my video just cut out for a second. You're getting <sighs> great quality at the beach there, probably. Yeah, I know. I'm so happy yeah. you could, Nothing like you know. an ice cold beer on the beach, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like Coors Light from the Rockies. <laughs> Down at the shore. Yeah. Now, All Stevie right. Wonder, uh, that, that's the position cover is dope, by the way. Side note. 
But oh, thank you, thank you. I, I, I also I also dug it quite a bit. Thanks. I mean, hey, steal it, play, play yourself. I get I got inspired because uh, CV Ray Vaughn played a cover of it. Oh, cool. Um, Did and you just tell him to steal your cover of a different song? <laughs> steal my cover of a I was, just, I was like, it's okay, I let, I license it to you. <laughs> yeah, on Stevie's I'm behalf. Gonna, you can cover it too. You, know, you can I, cover I Superstition. I, I, I'll, I'll talk to Stevie, wonder, I'll hold him back, be like, nah, nah, like high school, man. Little boy. Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm just saying, I always, I like playing Superstition. I've been thinking about playing uh, I Wish. Is that the song? Dun, 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 dun. I could probably play it, but I'm, I'm yeah. nervous now. Yeah. Um, there we go. I can get it. Um, yeah, I've thought about playing that as a cover, too, but I haven't gotten around to it. But, I mean, I think with your funk and stuff, it, it, it yeah. would probably fit in. Well, like I, 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 almost, <laughs> I almost picked Stevie. I, I just changed last minute. Um, well, not last minute, but just felt uh, compelled to more to talk about my connection with Billy Strings of my uncle, but Stevie Wonder and living in Detroit um, while making this music has been a huge influence. And we actually have played Superstition quite a bit, and we're planning to do uh, Isn't She Lovely at uh, EP release. So. Nice, nice. nice. I, yeah. I, I like that one. I always thought about Master Jammer, too. There was like, yeah, when I was in a subway one. once, uh, there was just like a, a couple of buskers. Like the guy literally only had like a, a, a hi hat and a snare. And I think it was just a basis, and then this dude with just a tremendous voice was singing Master Jammer and was carrying the whole oh, thing, man. which was really sick. But anyways, that's awesome. Let's let's get to you you doing some playing. You know, introduce yeah, us to sure. your songs. Good. And I mean, let's uh, get this rolling. Grab the old guitar. Does it have a name? It does not have a name. Fair enough. Just just call him my my telly, I guess. Just I just uh, read out big... the serial number. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good name. <laughs> um, but no, so the main song, the EP is made up of four songs, um, two that the guys at Toad had written before I had gotten into the mix, and then um, one that we really did collaboratively is the main group now, and then this one that I had the foundation for, uh, it's called Silhouette, which we're planning to have the single. Um, it'll, it'll have come out on uh, by 8th tentatively. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's a little bit of finger picking. It's got some jazzy chords in it and, uh, I'll just go ahead and uh, give you a little bit of a taste of it right now. Let's see. That's kind of a uh, like big body like of the song, and then there's an outro where the chords change a little bit again. Um, but yeah, so um, it's a uh, it's this like kind of like flourished finger picking thumb on the E, uh, pointer on the D, middle on G, ring on B, and you just kind of flourish and then back and forth on the bass and the treble. And it starts on a C major, seven, then it goes to this E7 sharp five, which is kind of this chord. I had a guitar lesson where I was introduced to it. It's like this 13th chord, but you flat um, your pinky on the B. And my buddy Jake Schweins was, who is a great guitarist as well, and in a band called the Sugar Lumps. He was basically we were jamming, and giving me a lesson, and he introduced me to this chord. Uh, is the is the you, you, so it's a B chord, right? You said the, yeah. the fifth is sharp or flat. So this the if you were to do the B thirteen chord, dominant thirteenth chord, and then sharp the pinky, so it's pointer on B, middle on the uh, 
seventh of E, middle on the seventh of D, ring on the eighth of G, and the point, uh, pinky on the eighth of uh, the B. Is that okay, I got it. That I sounds it. right. I have to transpose it two up because I'm yeah. a whole set, oh, but I, I think I it's you. on the nine, so it's like, I think it's just like a, that, and then you add this. Yeah, right yep, yeah. yep, yep, that looks right. But yeah, this, I was introduced to this chord, and I pretty much wrote the song because it just, it's funky, it's jazzy, it has a great dissonance on from the major seven to it, um, and yeah, just kind of rocked with it, so I feel like that's a really big part of it, but then it goes to this A with an open A string, okay, and then G, normal G bar chord on the E and then it's uh, got this little turnaround. Is that, is that A major or A minor? A ma minor? A major. I've never seen someone play A major wait, like wait. that up so, there. Open so it's the a bottom half of the bar chord. Bottom half of the bar chord, yeah, but it's the open, open a, a string. Open yeah. A, okay, but that's A minor, right? It's like it's it's um it's it's, it's like it's almost like it's doing oh, a, yeah, a C you're right, you're it's right. it's my, I was it's yeah, like yeah, a, yeah, a minor yeah. step. Yeah, no, no, it's good. I, I was just thinking of like no, in the you key. Are. Okay, you can't fool Kanem. <laughs> <laughs> got them chords unlocked. You can fool me. Yeah. I was just like, yes, that was about right. <laughs> you, yeah. you got me with a B13. I'm like, all right, I'm out. And yeah, when you said a, C a minor, you said it's, F. Like it's, a B, it's a B13 with a flat. Okay, what? <laughs> yeah, you said like E4 sharp something, and I was like, I'm I'm not paid enough for this. <laughs> well, I don't know. Me, I'm, I'm, not, I'm in a different. Haven't, you haven't taken the master class yet. Yeah, no. I'm definitely not that smart either. It's just. Uh, you know, I before I got on here, I had to piece it together. Like, what is this chord? But uh, yeah, so you're right. So, so when you uh, so you said when you, uh, I know you're joking about that, but I'm curious. So when you do write these, are you <clears throat> thinking about that in mind? Or like, are I know you said you took some guitar lessons, so I'm, I'm assuming you have some sort of theory mm. background. But mm -hmm. when you write, do you? Uh, because like, with some of this stuff, I think what's really interesting is like how the uh, the progression goes, and it, it kind of changes mm -hmm. here and there. Do you uh, do you just kind of feel out and jam out and see what you know? Just got let go with what the ears say, or do you do you think of like you know, hey, this is where I think it should go? Like, how much does the theory play in terms of that? Um, it definitely does play, but not initially. I think. You know, especially as like an, a jam group, like we improvise a lot, and that's pretty much how I write my solos. I pretty much just improvise, use stock phrases, anything. Like if I learn a chord like that, I'm just gonna mess around with it for a while and see what works. I mean, I know the chords that are in this E minor scale that would work well in this progression, and then I kinda just tinker with it um, until something works there. and. Uh, another thing was I wanted it to continually descend throughout the mm -hmm. whole neck, which is um, I think I played around with this third chord for a really long time before I even realized that 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 A chord would work there. Mm -hmm. um, I think I was trying to like. Are you playing that with your major. thumb up there on yeah. the? Oh, okay. So so I, kind of. <laughs> I also when I do this one. Just third Sorry. chord in the progression. I also hit the open E before I do it, but then I mute it pretty much right away. Oh, so interesting. Like... That... That's. I'm glad you mentioned that because I was trying to think. Like I think subconsciously, I I can hear that there's like a walking bass line. Yeah. Or, and but you know, when you hear it, it's that it's just that one guitar. But it, it yeah. kind of gives it that rhythm, and and you're doing the, uh, I think the other thing you're doing is like the, and it sounds really good with the mm -hmm. reverb you have, by the way. But you're doing kind of like a pat or like a muting as you go, and that kind of gives it mm -hmm. like this like, yeah. yeah, it's like someone on a kick drum or, or clap or something, and and it it gives it this really cool, uh, you know, feel that if you didn't if you just played strictly the chords or notes, you probably wouldn't get that same emotion out of it 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank yeah. you for that. I appreciate it. it. We did run into some issues with the with the hand chuck or the the hit with because a snare, it's a rim shot in our recording. Huh. Okay. And we were running into some issues with getting them lined up right or having one not meshing well or overpowering, and it, it'd be these weird sounds. But eventually, uh, we got them all lined up. Well, at least we think so. You know, DIY producers um, do the best we can. But <laughs> you know. do you know who uh, Ichika uh, Mo is? If not, I'll. He's, I'll inst- he's like the Instagram guy who does all the crazy. Yeah, he, this sounds yeah. a lot like him. It sounds like I think you'd really dig him. He does this okay, like sure. very clean yeah. guitar walking line, and he does. He has a riff that's very similar to this, but how he like breaks it down, like one finger doing that, and then the other doing this thing. But like I, mm-hmm. I, I think you'd like his. I mean, he's. I think you. I mean, you said you've already checked him out. So yeah, it just. It I reminds, think I know of him. I don't think I've done a deep dive. But I'll send you his stuff. But yeah, yeah it's send me uh, some cool, some cool things that you like. It's very similar. Very cool. I like it a lot. It's like. Awesome. Uh, Thank you. I appreciate. Very that. relaxing. Yeah, yeah I like, great. I, I like what you did with the B chord because I feel like it, what that's. So do you think of the song in C major or A minor? I think of it in oh, E minor. E minor. Yeah. <laughs> We're not ready, Kano. Oh, We're not ready. Minor. E minor. Do you do like an E pentatonic minor so over it? All e pentatonic minor works really, really well. And then I actually e. resolve the song so on a G that. G major seven, which you know, G major, okay. E minor, the same thing. I guess you could. I can see why all three of those chords you could come because all of those exist. I guess within the same. Like, like, if you play an E minor pentatonic, you're gonna get a B minor and an A minor. I guess, mm-hmm. right? Is that music theory accurate? I don't maybe. know. Uh, maybe. Uh, <laughs> like, I, saying, I, I was trying to figure out. I'm, uh, if you play E minor, uh, don't worry, I'm gonna destroy you. you in like then two you play but... A minor and then you play B minor. I think those all, like, you can use all of those in the same. Like, if you're playing in E minor, you could use all three of those chords in B and key. I think. Probably. I think. I, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, the re- no, the, I, I was thinking of it because it started on C as the root, so I was thinking it was like C major, but I'll, I'd have to mess around with it more. It's 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 a cool song. I really like the, the second B chord because the reason why I was asking is because if it was in C, that B chord would be a seven chord, you know? Yeah. Um, And I feel like... Th- if it wasn't C, I always have tr- trouble, like with that seven chord. On what should I do with it? Do I do like a inversion off of that, or do I do? I I love doing like a flat a flat fifth and a flat seventh in like the B chord there. Mm-hmm. Like um, I like doing that a lot. But I, I, you gave me a new option, and that's why I really appreciate yeah. it. That's why I want to say I'm gonna have to mess with it because it also has like a if it's in that kind of key, it has like an interesting like I think that note. That note is really interesting because mm-hmm. it's like offset from those scales. It's even offset from the E uh, minor scale because that'd be like that's the like the uh, major seventh and it's that leading tone mm-hmm. into that E, which makes it cool. Yes, but, yeah, yeah. That, that sorry, probably tone. to go off on a music theory. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm, no I'm, I'm interested. I was gonna say I only think in zeros and ones now. It's like <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a uh, I uh it, it's. That's so why I, I shot my shot. I, I was like, I think it could be this, like A minor, B minor, and E minor all sound kind of mm. like, I don't know. <laughs> Those are, I think, all minor. And well, I'd have to think about it more. I'm yeah, not, G I, is the only major one, I think. I thought C is major. C is major uh, too. Oh yeah, no, I thought right, D is right. major, major also. Seven. You played a D. <laughs> no, oh, oh no, I, I'm talking about the E minor scale. Forget about me. I haven't done All this right. in a while, dude. It's, <laughs> I'm um, new here. <laughs> well, wait, wait, it, the thing is, like, you, you sparked a lot of interest and got us thinking. And yeah, you know, since especially since Prabhu and I probably haven't done this in a little bit, I yeah. appreciate that a lot because now yeah, I'm like kind of sure. engaged and with like a bunch of shit. Excuse me. I've been just dealing with it in my week. It's it's fun to yeah. like dissect music more and everything. And so with that, let's like let's dissect the EP. Um, I know you have uh, the song so, so what you sent us so a demo and a master. Do you want us to like yeah. start playing those now, or do you want to talk more of the, about the EP first? Oh uh, well, I could just touch on the EP a little bit more, and then we can jump into them. Um, sure. There's four songs. We got Silhouette, Is It Me, which is another funky, like a. Uh, 
it's give us a sample it's, it's a structured song but it's it's built to improvise and jam um so if you like kind of a grateful dead style um song but yeah i'll give you a, there's this lead there's this intro riff um that kind of drives the whole song um here it is. <laughs> What, what, what yeah. effect are you using on it? The auto the envelope pedal. Uh, envelope, nice, nice. Because yeah. I mean, I I know it, I, it wasn't a wah. I mean, I'm a fan so, of a wah, but like I heard a little bit of ring in the background when you turned it on, and I was like, yeah. oh, it's gonna be distorted and heavy, and then it was like wah, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah. this is different. I like it. <laughs> so what that one's called? That's called Is It Me. Is it me? Um, okay. And that one, you know, that comes from a lot of inspiration comes from some Herbie Can Hancock on that one. Okay. Um, chameleon. Uh, and it's just the structure of the song is built. There's a verse chorus and then like jam the our saxophonist. We really let him cut loose on that one. Um, it's just a good one to play. And then um, we got another one called uh, Body of a Goddess. Uh, endearingly, we call it B.O.G. Uh, and it's just kind of it's D minor, A minor, most of the song just on the triads and just a little funk, uh, funk strumming. much it we do this extended outro jam um that's pretty cool with that one and then lastly we have a um, song called what i want which is entirely instrumentals and it's just an a b a b structure where there's this motif that permeates throughout and then every person in the group gets a solo during it um, okay which is that one is really fun it's got this it's these funny rests that really make the groove funky um, but the bass line is pretty much and that's pretty much it for the whole song <laughs> I'll harmonize with the uh, down here with the guitar when that's going and essentially we'll we'll have that riff go and we basically do a round robin in the first section of who riffs each time. Yeah. And then after four, we go into a chorus section, I guess you would call it, where saxophone solos, then um, I solo, and then Serge will solo on bass, um, and then the, uh, whoever's playing drums will have solos. And then, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a fun one to play. And that's pretty much the EP. That's Hot Tub Toad Machine for you. I love that um, name. I love that name. That's, <laughs> that's a it. Name. Yeah. I have a question about like the last. What's the last song called again? The uh, what I want. What I want. How how do you like? Um, I feel like interesting enough. I feel like I, I always lack confidence in um, executing or feeling comfortable with just doing an instrumental song. I always feel like oh, I need words. I think that's how connect people connect mm -hmm. to something the best. Even though to be honest, like. I could just go instrumental. I mean, like stuff like Europa by Santana yeah. it has been like on repeat for me, or like Little Wing or Lenny by Stevie mm -hmm. Ray Vaughan. And how, how do you kind of do, is it just come natural to you, or do you have to like kind of fight yourself to not write lyrics for it? Because I think I have to fight myself to not write lyrics for things most of the time. So I actually was not involved in writing the song. Oh, okay. um, this is one of the this is the first song I ever saw them play. And okay my my bandmates my current bandmates in toad and i also got to give a shout out to dustin cook who was in toad before me um and he came up with this bass line um okay because i've actually never written a song like this is just gonna be Ever? instrumental no, because <laughs> well i i'm the voc i'm a vocalist yeah. primarily i would say and i'm always not that i you know feel like i need the spotlight but i sing and i, I love to sing so i'm gonna write songs that yeah. um you know, I try and get some interesting vocal melodies too. But 
the two parts of this song that really get it going is in my mind and why I think it worked so well and when I first heard it I was so interested to you know connect with these guys is the rests and the and the groove uh, so the drummer is just it's a very weird beat and our drummer Scott Schember is just like on it and it, it keeps the whole pace moving the entire time it keeps yeah. people's feet moving if they're hearing it and then the main sax riff to it is just like infectious and I think that's something we have as like a funk rock band I know a lot of groups do have saxophone um, but he's really a prominent Brandon is his sax playing is really a prominent part and that this song is really structured around his sax riffing okay. and you know that's something that you know maybe a lot of rock artists don't have and it kind of cuts through I think in that track um, and he has like a specific riff or, or lick that he continues to play or, or like yeah. a repeating line okay there's like three or four riffs okay. that when that rest happens in the bass line he jumps in with um and it's uh i don't know it's it's interesting it drew it's, you in so it drew me like, in. obviously it drew me in. Why a good sax <laughs> yeah yeah i saw him playing this i they didn't have a singer and i was like oh man i want to do the I sax jo- i gotta join this band <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i i think there's something to be said about that i mean one i think saxophone is just a dope instrument but like it's a mm. i think there's something to be said about the variety when you have variety too so like you have like i think if you just have maybe two guitars or you hear a lot of soloing of one instrument you can be like okay move on whatever but like even you said you do yeah. like a ron robin solo so like you're getting you know even though it's purely instrumental i mean it's four or five minute of just people doing solos you have like as i feel like when people tend to do that the solos tend to be showcasing something different like obviously a drummers yeah. you're showcasing the some cool rhythmic stuff and then like saxophone mm. i feel like has this like this kind of smooth feel to it and like guitar yeah. is usually flashy and bass is just like locked in the pocket so i feel like I, I feel like it's i feel like you have variety and i think with instrumental music that's kind of what you're talking about i think i think people honestly will feel instrumental music more sometimes because if you like uh, and this is something sometimes and because like you know doing instrumental music and especially with like metal i think about this where i'm like is this gonna be so boring but like at least with something like metal vocals are the thing that actually off puts a lot of people who would otherwise be okay with the music and like my mom like you know i know people who are like you know i have family members or something who if i just show them the music without vocals they're like it's cool then the moment you add some sort of vocal to it they're like no nah, no 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 and like same yeah. with me that's usually the thing i criticize first so maybe that's different in a live setting than um mm-hmm when I'm at home and listening on headphones, but like, I do feel that like live, <clears throat> there's already an energy there with instruments. Yeah. And like, I'm not listening to like, I'm not, I'm trying to have a good time when I'm live versus like, mm-hmm. if I want to listen to a band where I'm like, I can sit and like, uh, yeah. really feel the feels. <laughs> I might yeah. not do that live. And that's, that's my, so. well, no, I, I agree. And I also think, it depends on the genre because like funk has a lot of instrumental music like wolfpack yeah. like half of their stuff is Dude, they're so good as <laughs> as no and it almost has like a trance element to it where it's you know uh, or like james brown where it's just hitting the same funky riff over yeah. and over and over again but then maybe you toss in a saxophone maybe you toss in a key solo and it just keeps it keeps you guessing keeps you grooving and uh you can just like you can just jam to it all night so uh, no that's a that's a great point completely agree well I'll, I'll try to get brave and uh write some instrumental stuff i have some ideas but it's always just like i think to make iron point, and bones a eight a nine minute one like. i i mean it's <laughs> half of it is already kind of instrumental because i really love the it's a metal song i wrote and i need to just finish on like recording bass and recording vocals too and probably mm. re-recording guitars but i i'm not gonna get down on myself right now but um <laughs> it's a collab song between him and i that, yeah, oh, yeah. Well. that is because it's a collab it's probably taking longer because i've not done shit on it for uh, a I'm while just, at this point i mean it, it's on both of us like i i can i can record bass just as well and i can actually like execute and do my vocals but then i just get distracted with like other songs i'm working on for more of like the canamex and canamex and yeah. diamond dog sort of stuff because like if i do metal like 
if you ever branch out, like, do you have other music that you'd branch out to? Would you would you do that under a different name? Because I feel like if it's like funk rock, you could do Toad. But if maybe it's more of like your acoustic singer songwriter, would you do that under a different name and not do it as Toad? Yeah, I think. Well, so I still have the Kai Althaus and Hotel Arch thing going. So I, okay. I think, and the last demo I did was just me. Like yeah. I did all the instruments, and it was much more like acoustic rock, like Jack Johnson, E, John Marish type stuff. And you know, I still I I'll play um, acoustic solo shows as like Kai Althaus. Yeah. Um, so I might, you know, I I don't want to try and like box toad into only doing funk stuff yeah. like i want to be versatile um but i think it definitely if i write a like slower acoustic ballad i probably wouldn't bring it to the toad guys um i'd probably sure. you know i'd probably flesh that out on my own time and yeah you know see what so, happens with it that's kind of how i feel about like um the iron and bone song it's like i yeah. i would need to release that under a separate like entity basically <laughs> you'd be, you'd be like duke, Sil- duke silver from parks and rec where ron swanson yeah, does yeah. saxophone under yeah. like a complete different name <laughs> yeah yeah gold johnson <laughs> yeah um but no if like cardi b released a hard rock album she i would be into that it. would she be could be into it but it'd probably be like weird that, I, i'd be well, dope though i would what's listen what's to a cardi b level? metal album <laughs> <laughs> I get that level. People would be like, oh. it's like Metallica. It's like, yeah, most people skip Lulu, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was going to say, though, um, do you want to get more into Silhouette? You want me to pull those up and let's have a listen? Is yeah, there anything yeah, in particular? Um, I think maybe if you could play, you know, just, just the beginning where the groove really gets going and the vocals kind of pop in and maybe we can talk about the theme and then... There's a, it really builds to this kind of climactic, climactic outro jam. Um, and maybe we can build up to that. Um, All right, let's get this going. You, you're able to share your screen, Ken? I'm about to share my screen, probably. Just chill. Or do you, do you, you, can, you think you can handle it, or you want me to? No, because. I can handle it. I'm going to share sound, too. Ooh, Am I handling it? You're handling it. It's right here. You That's a it. dope background. Is that that Monterey? That's just, yeah, that's just the default. I haven't back. updated my computer in like four years. Or what, dude? Two years. Get, don't don't tell the internet that. <laughs> they said they said uh, yeah I know. They there said auto tune didn't work on the last update, and I was like, I ain't gonna work with that auto tune. I need auto tune if I'm ever gonna say I have auto tune, but I'm not gonna have it not work. Of course. All right, let's let's hit this. Oh, no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. A silhouette, it follows me until I can't be seen. It shuffles on the street, it's feet with silver linings me. A shadow of the days I've let pass by, by, by Tampering with memories or just lies, lies I really like that lead line, how it comes in. Yeah, I was going to say, what's the effect on that lead? It has like yeah, a... Yeah, uh, well, thank you very much. But that is a... So I play it clean. There's two two guitar tracks running the, at that It moment. is. Like, okay. yeah, I was like, well, it sounds like a phase thing, uh, but it, yeah. it works really well. But one is, uh, one is just straight clean, and the other has a chorus effect on it. God damn it! The the stereo chorus. What a be- what a beautiful, great great choice for it. I'm like a, I'm a huge fan. Like I, I always have like I have a Boss Chorus Ensemble CE5, always like ready on my pedal board if I end up in a situation where I can play mm-hmm. stereo because there is 
there's simply nothing I love more than like the stereo chorus from just something like that to something like Bark at the Moon by Ozzy Osbourne. Mm-hmm. It just it, it has such an amazing, tremendous full sound. I agree. It's a it's a great sound. It's a great sound. Um, and I was going for I wanted it to be like shimmery. Like the song mm-hmm. is groovy. It's mellow at this point. The the notes, the bends, they're they're drawn out. You know, I'm not like trying to shred my mind out. And I felt like that that tone gave it the most uh, just gave it the most oomph at this moment without being like too much because it still yeah. had to be mellow. No. Yeah, I mean, it kind of fits that whole silhouette eeriness, like the idea of like a silhouette there. Like it sounds yeah. like kind of ghosty or something. Like it's yeah, yeah, it's cool. It, it's a good build up to to something like that from you know your single uh, vocal take to you know doing your your harmonies or, or your double double takes there <laughs> into that. Mm-hmm. It, like it's very very smooth transitions throughout. It well, kind thank of you rem- very much. I appreciate that. I. uh I, I don't feel like I'm the best producer, and I did have some help yesterday. I spent a long time with our buddy Muncie, who's a rapper and based out of Detroit, and he, he helped. I had, I, had, I had mixed up to like 75% of it, and he really, I feel like, got it to where it is now. Um, but, yeah, I appreciate I, that because it's I respect a, a that struggle too. in my head. I respect so. you you going to someone. Uh, that's something I need to work on. Probably always tells me I need to do it. But it's something I need I'm to work on. I'm just trying to get money out of you, dude. I'll pay me an hour. <laughs> <laughs> no, but just getting the sound. Outsource it, and, man. And, 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 and working with others. Like, that's something I've always struggled with. So I, and especially in the mixing and, and mastering process. Like, uh, definitely kudos to you for, for being open to that. Just because you're yeah. serving the song at that point. And I really mm-hmm. respect that. And, it, and I, I completely understand. It can be hard. Um, to like welcome somebody else in your creative process, May, especially like if you don't have chemistry with that person, it yeah. can be hard to take notes from them. But um, I, I feel like when I, whenever I can best like not marry myself to a specific moment of the song, and I can iterate, and I can't hear when my voice is flat. I, like I need mm-hmm. to have other people tell me that. And you know, it took me a long time to be like, no, I'm a go from like no i'm a good singer i can do it to be like okay i can improve i can fix the spot and the song will be better for it and i think um, that's so the i completely thing. know what you're talking about <laughs> sorry i didn't mean to oh no no, no go okay. for it i i think that's the thing too that's like a really big like when you hear someone else their take on your thing they're gonna be objective and not take mm-hmm. in like you know the th- like when like same thing with guitar and stuff like i i had such a tendency to over produce like over over mix everything and over so then everything sounds like over i, I don't know it just sounds like like at that point then you're ki- you start killing the mix and like now it's like it's like just think of it as being a musician and then like when i get to mixing put on mm-hmm. if i'm going to do it myself put on a different hat because like yeah. otherwise you're gonna start being like yeah like you said it's like you start you're viewing yourself as a guitarist and and you start viewing like, your vocals and and uh i i think also to you not just sending it off to someone else but you like i assume when you're saying you're working with your friend um yeah it's like you're actually in the same room and you're seeing mm-hmm. like i think there's a magic there when you're working together with something someone that's something that like i really appreciated the times that i've like worked with other people and just sitting in the same room <clears throat> and like it's just i just feel like things also go by faster it just like has this mm-hmm. like i think sometimes sitting at home and mixing can get so clinical on your own yeah. stuff and the producing side get clinical but when you're with your friend it still can have that like yeah. even whether you're just sitting in logic and doing stuff it still feels like you're being a musician yeah. in a band i agree like, I, and i think anything in life that is hard is like that like if you're working out with somebody else mm-hmm. you're gonna get more push i mean <laughs> working from home has its benefits don't get me wrong but um you can talk to people, collaborate, and those types of things. It's great. And that what you were you were correct in saying. I I basically went to the studio, and he was kind enough to like, you know, give me some tips because I felt like I feel like my production is every project I do, I get better and I learn more. Mm-hmm. But I'm not quite there, and um, you know, I think he's helping me 
you know, he's at, he's making the song better, but also, you know, giving me the skills to continue on. I think that's like a big thing of where I want to improve is I don't want to just outsource everything and say, hey, you mix this. Hey, you master this. Hey, I want to, like, be able to sit in the room with someone and be like, okay, I'm taking your time. The same, you know, whatever the same fee is going to be to do this, just let me sit in the room while you do it. Just so mm-hmm. I, I'm gaining a little something more. Even if, if if I have to pay extra to sit in a room with someone to, to do it to, I'm like, whatever. As long as yeah. I learn something from this. And it's not just here you go and I get a finished product. Like, I think there's at least I would like to know how to do it better if I need to do it mm-hmm. and then yeah. just not know it all. The mentorship is like, yeah. hey, be my mentor in this, please. Like, don't like I don't just want to. It's like because it's it's yeah. like, yeah, that's that's huge. Is there is there another section you want me to play? You want me to keep playing through it? Um, um so you could jump forward like maybe like 20 seconds because it's another verse pretty much as the first okay and then it kind of settles and comes into this outro which is pretty awesome so, so wait wait take it, it from... it's like essentially half the song <laughs> yeah. is an outro uh it I might like, it like, might wait. need to be it might need to be a little farther but yeah try oh, like okay. 20 seconds ahead iron and bones okay, dog get to. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of outro in Iron Bones. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is about I, want, I want Iron and Bones to be a song we talk about over multiple episodes, but never so we, release. <laughs> no, man. We're going we're gonna to do it. Just, no, you're going to. Yeah. 2023 I, is going to. 2024. 2025 is going to be. We turn it into one of those. If we have this many followers, we'll release <laughs> Iron and Bones. Yeah. Because <laughs> every. Because the people. Only when the people are ready. <laughs> Sorry, what'd you say? I got to hear it now. You know, you've been talking. Uh, it up. I'm, I'm, it's gonna sound I'm dying like to get my ears on it. <laughs> uh, let, let's finish with Silhouette and, and we'll see what, if we can pull that up. All right, I, can, I, can, I can play it still. Uh, the, hey, no, this is not about Iron Bones. This yeah, is about <laughs> Kaya House. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah. All right, so let's, let's bring it back. Wait, this is the same song? Seconds. Same yeah. song. That, that it just uh, turned yeah that's cool that was like right at the climax <laughs> this is the only thing that has been on the screen yeah. <laughs> that's i just <laughs> but but that's saying something because like if you if you scrub through and you hear different things you're like oh this really like you know yeah. evolves and stuff yeah exactly yeah so let's try it from here all right tremors of the faith that we all share share The silhouette that follows is always there, silhouette <laughs> i like it i like add? the the tambourine a lot like yeah it, oh it, thank you that definitely locks in did you add like um like ambient like kind of noodling guitar in the background too yeah so it's uh Chef's i'm kiss. doing a thank you thank you i'm doing a like 
Here, I'm doing, I'm hammering on like this, and it's just like cr got crazy delay on it. Yeah. I'm just kind of like doing that over and over again. And it's just like saturated and delay. Um, it's a really I want to do some texture in the back there. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I wasn't sure if I was even going to keep it, but then when I went to mixing it, cause it was just like way too loud at first and was like overpowering the guitar, but bringing it down a bit, EQing it really, really, I was going for like a wall of sound kind of like drony yeah. in the background. And I think it, I think it worked out. Um, de de definitely executed it, especially with like a, a nice, like I like the strong sax line. Then like the guitar comes in and then you have that sort of ambience in the background, really good mix, like mix of textures. And then on top of that, the way you kind of control the voice and choose kind of different panning options as it kind of progresses really like i just felt like the song was opening up and like i'm assuming that's your intent because it really fe feels like these doors are opening as you're as you're ag exiting the song yeah yeah absolutely and uh i gotta give a lot of props to um muncie for that where he came in and was like if we started panning these vocals um it could uh it could turn into something cool um but yes that's absolutely and uh you know trying to trying to build up I, I feel like i write a lot of songs like that where i go for some, these these big outros but they're still kind of melodramatic and like emotional i mean even the toad guys when i first showed it to him like ah this is kind of slow I don't but then the sax player he, he comes in at that outro jam and he just he's like all right it's kind of like uh <laughs> it's kind of like hey jude the song kind of reminds me of hey jude with the like uh kind of ballady piano and then the la mm -hmm. la la with the especially yeah. with the, the tambourine put me in that mindset yeah. where i and I, I i just had this like oh okay i want to like sing along or this sounds kind of like a re resolution and like uh i think it's it's cool because like when you do that then it's like uh especially live or something i feel like that translates into like you know people you know you, you lift people's moods by the yeah. end of it yeah like, yeah like you can do it. You can get away with playing an emotional song, but still have like it be lively and not be like a downer in the show. Mm -hmm. For which is seems like the rest of the set is mostly like upbeat yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. My hand is on a wave. Apparently. Okay. <laughs> it's just on the waves. <laughs> yeah. I was like... for the wave while listening to Silhouette. I mean, you, you. I could definitely surf to that outro for a very long. Yeah. Time, even though I don't know how to surf. <laughs> so so like when you were you said there's like some challenges with like how the song kind of has like a, a a slower start and build up so is it did you write this all yourself and or did you like start bringing it to the band and then that's kind of how the outro unfolded how did like the writing of this kind of unfold so i had the full guitar part the full vocal the vision in my mind to be melodramatic build to an outro mm -hmm. all that like written recorded but i just had that part yeah and uh for a while i was just sitting on it. i was playing it acoustically at open mics and it'd go over well but i knew i was missing something and then when i met these guys um brandon and serge um i brought it to them and i was like let's 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 see how this goes and it and we jammed well but it was still like lighter and they're like yeah we could do it we like it it it's just a little bit more slower it didn't, than what it didn't we win them over. <laughs> but then we played it and like we always jammed on it was always felt felt good but then we played it at a show um and brandon our saxophonist really like he stole the entire night because the solo yeah. at that end he just found it like maybe up to that point he wasn't feeling it before and he just he just locked in and just ripped some some gnarly stuff and then from that point on we were like all right this one is <laughs> and then we built it out more and more from there uh so that, that's just like really interesting because like you had this kind of like seedling of a song that you had already like essentially like you 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 knew how it was going to go for for a while and mm -hmm. then working with a band and the band still didn't even like feel it until you were actually playing live and i really respect that because i think it's like difficult um to keep pushing with something when there's like doubts kind of 
it seems like you know you're dealing with seeds of doubt just because you maybe the band wasn't into it as much but once you got actually got to communicate with the full band in like a live setting because i would have you know you 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 have the song for us to listen to today mm -hmm. and i would be like oh this is like naturally a song that like you should write you should record you should mm -hmm. finish you should release and it's funny that you had to still go through all those steps so now mm -hmm. us at the end they're saying yeah no this is a this is a knockout <laughs> yeah all and along I don't, the way i don't want to i don't want to say they like didn't like it or they always liked the but song they, they, it wasn't like it I, was I understand, different you it was know, different yeah I, I, I write songs. I present them to bands. Yeah. Some of them are great. Some of them are okay. I know, you know, over time too, like, I mean, mm -hmm. I can think of songs I've written in the past and just over time you start to be like, I mean, it's cool. It's all right. It got the job done. It filled mm -hmm. a spot in like our song set, yeah. but I can rewrite history a little bit in our, uh, in our live set by trying to get that song out for a better song. Mm -hmm. And so, I know that feeling where, you know, the band's never going to be, like, completely against you and, and mm -hmm. knock you down because bands are very supportive. But you know when someone's like, yeah, we, we can play that song. Yeah. yeah. We, we've, we've all been – I'm trying to think of a song that's like that. It's like um, like a really basic, boring song that, like, you get sick of real quick. I'm just thinking of high school, not saying this is a basic or boring song, but, like, there's a certain point where smells like Teen Spirit. You you weren't able to play it for a little bit because you're like every band is like let's play smells like Teen Spirit. Let's play smells. You started like, feeling like Nirvana. You're like, um, <laughs> <laughs> in what way do you mean depressed? No, no, I mean like how uh, I think I think Nirvana hate it. No, no, not that. God, no, not that. Uh, I meant I meant like I think. I think they didn't enjoy playing Smells Like Teen, or it's like how a lot of these bands, like because they like Sweet Child know, of Mine for yeah, or Stairway or, or all that kind. Of, it's like everyone's right. one hit wonder. It's like they it the it might not be the band's favorite song, but it's like yeah. the audience's favorite song. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, not the other stuff. I'm not. <laughs> but if you are, call me and I'll I'll help you. <laughs> but uh, you know, the dark dark times, right? Yeah. Let's just let's just end. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> As I'm hey, in the beach. Everyone, uh. just call friends if you're ever feeling down and blue, or play the blues if you're feeling down and blue. That always sets me right. You know, pick up a guitar. But, and drop G. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and drop tune. <laughs> and drop G. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah. So in terms of the. In terms of your live set, do you have a favorite song or from this EP that you feel like either you've already played live and it's your favorite or you're going to play live and, and you just know it's going to be your favorite? Um, just to interject, we, have you played them all live? We have played them all live. Oh, you have? Um, okay. And okay. we actually have a recording of the live set and we're putting them out on YouTube song Smart. by song. We don't have any other content. The sound quality in the space was not great. Like You can't hear the vocals at all, but it's something. So um, do you, just a quick question, because with my do you do, do you one shot or do you do you multi cam <laughs> and do you do, well, you, do, you, do you need do a you, videographer? Because seen, I'm all the way in New York. I can't help. You. But do I've you mix? seen your TikToks, though, and they're amazing. <laughs> you got all these different looks. No, we we uh, do you mix like the iPhone. I'm assuming iPhone or Android audio, because I feel like that's actually helped a lot, even though it's just like a yeah. phone. It's well, helped that's like, interesting. A, a little bit on muddy things especially if you have multiple cameras yeah because when you get just pure dry mixes like we were my mm -hmm. parents and i were watching a big a big show like one of the biggest artists ever in india and like the live show we we're like why does it sound bad and it's like it's there's no room mic or whatever mm -hmm. it's just all the direct and it sounds so boring it's like that whatever you, i don't know how you do it that's I I'll, I need to hire you, Kano, for live I, stuff. But like, take his it's, advice. It's just it's, just, it's <laughs> yeah, purely it's, he's great. <laughs> it's just purely iPhones. iPhones have gotten tremendous mm -hmm. at just letting sound become completely compressed when you're recording, but like not you know like how like you, I my GoPro still does this, but like if I don't have my GoPro in like my underwater case and I record video, it just sounds like <sighs> whenever you listen to the audio, like the audio just gets completely blown out. But like iPhones nowadays or Android phones, I'm sure, like they handle high noise very well when it's still mm -hmm. when it's recording video. So just do two phones at each side of the stage and, and mix it a little bit. Um, if that's, you get one close to like a vocal mo really monitor, that helps a lot. Yeah. No, so it was like, the reason the audio isn't great is because it was 
there was an issue with the PA. We were supposed to bring our own, and the venue was like, they let us use it, but they wouldn't let us turn up my voice like at all. So um, that's you can hear all the other instruments well, and like we have one of those Tascam ground recorders, and yeah. <laughs> Serge is a he's a photographer for a local newspaper out here, so he he kind of set that up. Um, but you know they're, they're good videos. I mean they're fun. They're I'm putting them on TikTok. You know doing doing the thing. Yeah. Um, can't complain. <laughs> doing so. the content machine. Yeah. Yeah. Doing doing the thing. Just fucking good. playing like the slot machines of the content lottery. Yeah. Some, <laughs> See, someday I will we'll get a hit. That's smart though. You've played the whole EP live, and that's a good idea because that way you get mm-hmm. some promo for it. So the to the original question: Where are any of those so far? Have, which uh, have they? any of them stood out to you as like just a live banger well i think everyone in the band really loves silhouette really Um, they really love it not just as a live banger but as a song um and then what i want the instrumental everybody Mm -hmm. gets their time to shine that one is a lot of fun especially when we're on and we're feeling it and we're grooving that one is that one is great um the other two are awesome as well, but I think those two stand. Like we almost, I almost sent you what I want because up until like 2 p.m. yesterday, we were like, I don't know which one should should we do the single with? Um, yeah. But we we decided on silhouette. So nice. Yeah, I think those two those two stand out. I mean, I mean, they're very dope. All right, Kai. Is there anything else you want to talk about with the EP, the single silhouette, or or anything else that's going on with you all? Um. Yeah, I think I'd like to uh, just one more time shout out my bandmates in Toad who weren't here today because um, so much of my mental health, my happiness, my well-being exists because I got to meet these guys and I have a good band to jam with, to be creative with, great chemistry. So Serge and Brandon, you guys are the fucking shit. Uh, Excited for us to put this tune out in the world. Um, and then other than that, Eastern Market, Detroit, outside of Midnight Temple, and Detroit City Distillery, Indian food and craft cocktails, free concert. Uh, really doesn't get better than that. Friday, July 29th, from 8 p.m. to uh, midnight. And we also, we're gonna be opened by my buddy Akash, who's doing a DJ set, and Muncie, uh, who's a, a rapper who was, I mentioned helped us produce so yeah can't wait all right dope uh so again this uh, the single comes out july 29th the single comes out will have come out july 8th okay and then the the whole ep will come out july 29th the whole thing will come out july 29th what, what's the what's the name of it again hot tub toad machine <laughs> that was a rhetorical question you didn't forget you just <laughs> I didn't wanted forget. to hear I didn't it again. say it you know i don't yeah. want to mess it up also i didn't forget but i also didn't want to mess it up so um, I think that's that's all we have today. Thank you for being on Tonal Distancing. Um, Kai, if you want to play us out, we'd love to listen. Yeah, sounds good. I think I'll, uh, I'll rock with that little outro where it gets funky. major (laughs) yeah it was nice thanks thank you guys thank you so much for having me this was so much fun uh you know you guys really got something dope going with this podcast and uh we 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 made the best out of uh uh, of lockdown and quarantine and the (laughs) times we live in 
Tonal oh. distancing. What a name. What a name. <laughs> you should see the other ones we originally thought of. Cut, cut the recording. We'll tell them all the names. Yeah. Uh. <laughs>